Welcome to everyone to this Friday talk by the NH. Today, we will be having the Upper Magdalena Valley as part of our series of talks where we include all the basins of Colombia. The first talk of today will be given by Cesar Mora, that is called Petroleum System of the Upper Magdalena Valley. Cesar is a geologist with more than 33 years of experience in all the projects of petroleum exploration. He got, some, he got expertise in modeling of, of petroleum systems mixed with the, analyst, uh, with the analysis of basins and petroleum geochemists. All of the, mo uh, the modeling of the petroleum systems, he's, he has worked as director, coordinator, as an interpret of different projects in companies such as Ecopetrol and Sea Petrol. Since 2004, he has worked as consultant first as the general director, PGT, and since 2005, he has worked as the technical manager of GEMS, and since 2014, he has worked as the manager of Cuenca. He has been a, an invited professor of geochemistry, of geochemistry and petroleum systems. Uh, the second talk that we got today is from 8.30 to 9.30, is the called Prospectivity of the Cenozoic from the Upper Magdalena Valley. This one will be given by the National University. So we got the first one. The first one that's going to be exposing the presenting in this in this talk is Edgar Chahid Kairus. Edgar Chahid is an exploration geologist from National University with a specialization in hydrocarbon man management from the from WIS. He led many exploration projects at Ecopetrol and was also TOG EMP exploration manager. He is co-founder and general manager of New Oil Exploration, focused on petroleum systems, seeking new places, new blocks, and rank prospects for exploration. Our second speaker of today with the National University is Alvaro Vargas Gomez, which is a geologist with a master's in geology from the National University of Colombia. He has more than 20 years of experience in applying structural geology, with emphasis on the design, collection, analysis, this interpretation and QC of information from potential fields and magnetotelluric methods. Alvaro was an inter uh, interpretation advisor and technical manager of Carson Helicopter Sync Aerogravity Division. Since 2006, he is a founding partner of Lithosphera Air Science, where he has developed more than 55 successful exploration projects for the oil industry in the United States, Canada, Colombia, Belize. Mexico, Guatemala, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, and, uh, and Argentina. He is the author, together with Victor Graterol, of the Colombia Official Potential Field Maps, published in 2010 by the ANH. The third speaker of today is Javier Guerrero Diaz, which he is a geologist from the National University of Colombia. He obtained a master and a PhD from Duke University in the United States in the areas of stratigraphy sedimentology and paleomagnetism. He participated with a multidisciplinary group of geologists and paleontologists from several American universities in a project of geostratigraphy, sedimentology, and magnetostratigraphy of the Honda Group in the Tatacoa Desert. He worked at the stratigraphy section of Geominas, today the Colombian Geological Survey, in various projects of the Cenozoic from, from the Magdalena River Valley. During several years, he has been a professor in the Department of Geoscience at the National University, lecturing courses in sedimentology, sequence stratigraphy, and regional geology. Javier has carried out research and consulting projects for several petroleum companies and for the National Agency of Hydrocarbons on rocks of the Cretaceous of Colombia, Barcar Basin, Bacar Basin, and the Cenozoic Portland Basin. And the last speaker of the National University of Colombia will be, sorry, Maria Daroca. Maria is, give me a second, please, sorry. Maria Emily Daroca is a geologist with a master's degree in the formation of the dosfer based in analysis and petroleum from the University Pier at Marie Curie in Paris, France. She has eight years of experience in the hydrocarbon industry and in academia. Maria started as a logger in Slumberger company in the first shale gas wells in the Vaca Muerta formation of the new Neuquin Basin from Argentina. 
She is now working in oil exploration as a seismic interpreter. Additionally, since 2016, she has been linked to the University of the Andes as a professor for the practical course of structural geology and tectonics. And the last talk of today will be the Columbia Round 2021 of the exploration opportunities that the ANH will be offering in the Upper Magdalena Basin. And this talk is be, will be given by me. I am a geologist from National University of Colombia. I graduated in 2017, and I got a master's degree in exploration geophysics from the University of Leeds in 2018. So thank you for, for all of the speakers for being here today for their presentations. And uh, we will start with Cesar Mora in this very moment. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. First, I wanna I want to thank uh, the ENH for this opportunity. Uh, today we are going to talk, we, we are going to present a, a summary of the petroleum systems of the Upper Magdalena Basin. Uh, we are going to talk about the geologic setting of the basin, uh, hydrocarbon occurrence, hydrocarbon potential, oil and gas geochemistry, basin modeling, and the petroleum system proposal uh, for the basin. In, uh, middle. Uh, Upper Magdalena Basin is, is an uh, intramontane uh, geological province that is between the central and eastern cordillera. It's, it's located be, be, between these uh, mountains. And also is uh, a basin when we have uh, a big section of the Cretaceous from the Cretaceous and also a Cenozoic section. Here we can see the distribution, the general distribution in the basin of the soft rock intervals and the reservoirs. Main reservoirs in the basin are related with the Cavallos formation from the Albion and also from the Montserrat or its equivalents, lithostratigraphic equivalents from the Campanian to Maastrichtian. And also we have uh, oil production from the Cenozoic units like Doima and Onda formation. Uh, this uh, distribution, this, uh, this stratigraphic distribution of the uh, petroleum system elements is, is very important because it, we can see that here we, we have the soft rock and the uh, reservoir. In a, in a very good relationship. And it's the same with the La Luna and Montserrat. That, that means we, this, this could be help in order to the hydrocarbon charge uh, processes in, in the basin. Uh, according to the structural model, the, the basin uh, is divided in two uh, geological provinces. In the north part, we have the Girardot Basin and in the central and southern part, we have Navas Basin. Uh, the hydrocarbon occurrence in the basin is concentrated uh, in the northern part and in the central one. We, we, we don't have really oil fields in the southern part. We have shows and we, uh, we have uh, oil seeps. Here you can see the location, the, the, the green point, uh, uh, are the location of the oil seeps. We had so many, especially in the northern part, when we have also a, a group of fields, a, a group of oil fields. Uh, this, this is an area where we, we know we have a, a, an active petroleum system. The hydrocarbon discoveries in the, in the basin started at uh, 1950, more or less, with the Ortega Tetuan fields located here in this, in this part of the basin, in the Hirardopsu basin. And uh, th this is the creaming curve for the, for the basin. Unfortunately, during this century, we don't have too much discoveries in the basin. Maybe Guando Southwest is, 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 the, is the only one with a, with a, a very good oil, oil in place. The main field, in the basin is uh, San Francisco field, 
with an oil in place close to 0.6 billion barrels of oil equivalent. Uh, San Francisco is located here in the, in the central part of the basin. And the total oil in place, uh, summarizing these uh, 85 fields, is close to 3.2 billion barrels. Here it's important to talk a little bit about Guando field. Here we have Guando, and in so many papers and so many studies, Guando is, is, is a field that, that is connected with the upper Magdalena Basin. And uh, even for Petrobras and uh, Nexin, the company that uh, are the owners of this field, they, they, they have papers uh, talking about upper Magdalena. But anyway, according to the, to the basin map from the ANH, Wando field is located in Inster Cordillera. Then this oil in place is not including, it's not including the Wando oil in place. That's, that's important uh, to, to, to have clear because we are talking about just about these fields, these 32 field, 38 fields that are located into the basin. The uh, first point we are, we are going to talk is about the hydro hydrocarbon potential. We have geochemical information from 26 wells. And uh, here we can, you can see the results of the main uh, uh, cross plot in order to evaluate thermal maturity and hydrocarbon potential. The first point is, the important point is that most of the samples are located in, in, uh, in the immature and early mature area, we, we don't have really information coming from samples that are located in the, in the late uh, window, oil window or in the gas window. And it is related, probably it is, it, it is related with the fact that uh, all this information is coming from the, from the structural heights where the maturity level is, is low and the maturity level in the in the depot centers and here we can see with the relation between tmax from pyrolysis and the production index that most of the samples has uh, has a very low uh, kerogen conversion level we, we don't have too much uh, conversion that 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 means that the quality of the sulfur of the organic uh, content that we are we have here from this data is very close to the original one in terms of the hydrogen index you can see that in especially for tetuan and Kava and la luna formation uh, we have very very good soft rock intervals we have very high hydrocarbon content hydrogen index excuse me and also very high uh, toc uh, another important point is that uh, the genetic potential, the summary of the oil we, we, we got the, during the pyrolysis is very, very high for, for a lot of these samples. We have a lot of oil here. And uh, as a summary, we have at least two soft rock intervals, one located uh, in the uh, Tetuan uh, formation uh, Albion source rocks and the other one in the La Luna formation and uh, their equivalents, chronostratigraphic equivalents, and the, the age for that interval must be between Turonian to Maastrichtian, maybe. And with this kind of data, we, we know that uh, we have an, a very good option to find uh, oil in the basin, additional oil, because we, we, we have. Uh, one of the best source rock uh, in our uh, basins. Now we are going to talk about oils and, and gas, oil and gas geochemistry. geochemistry. Uh, first, uh, talking about the quality of the oils. Here you can see API, API, API gravity and the saturates contained of the oils. And we have two groups in general. We, we have normal oils, normal to light oils. And also we, we have oils with API gravity below 20. Yeah, and, but 
not all of these oils are related with biodegradation processes. Uh, this is one of the bases in Colombia when we have some oil, some oils with low API gravity as a consequence of the low maturity level of the source rock. We, 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 we can see this, for example, for this kind of oils where we have all the N alkanes, and you can see that we don't have, in general, we, we don't have biodegradation processes according to the ga gas chromatography, but anyway, uh, we don't have a very, very high um, API gravity. We have different kind of phases. We have also these this, uh, oils like Tenai, where the API gravity is higher and is related with this this kind of N-alkanes that uh, show a, a, a changes in, in the soft rock uh, depositional environment. And also a very important point for, for some oils, for, a, for a, a, a big group of oil is that we have biodegradation, as you can see here, we don't, we don't have alkanes, but we have a refreshing processes uh, with a condensate. That means that here we have the same situation we, we described for the middle mark, that we, we have uh, two hydrocarbon char pools, and the first one was biodegraded, and we, we, we lose the, the N alkanes, but then we have a second pulse uh, with this condensate. It's very important that this information is very important to calibrate the, the basin modeling because we, we, we know that we have a complex system, which is very, very common when in, in these kind of basins where we have two different soft rock intervals with a very high hydrocarbon potential for, for everyone. In, in terms of the, of the depositional environment for the hydrocarbon deposition where we we don't have too much difference we we, we are changing uh, from uh, in a marine platform from uh, phases more proximal or more deltaic to the marine platform cdc plastics with with some uh, um, uh, calcareous influence uh, in general we it's not easy to separate the oil that is coming from la luna from the oil that is related or was generated from the Albion soft rock interval, the Tetuan limestone. Here we, we can see with, with another uh, cross plot the, the, that situation. Here you can see that we're using this uh, biomarker relation that they are very close. All the oils are very close. It's a, it's a it's almost a, a single uh, depositional environment. You can see that in different biomarkers, different relation uh, of biomarkers. We don't have a huge different, uh, for example, we don't have this kind of soft rock uh, phases that, that we can find in the Cordillera or in Janos basin. Uh, here we, we, we have oils related with this uh, marine environment that was, was similar in, in, in Tetuan and in La Luna formation. Uh, that means that it's not easy to separate the, the, that, that relation. We, we don't have too much information about soft rock, oil soft rock uh, correlation. That, uh, and according to that, we, we it's not, it's not easy to define which oil are coming from La Luna or which one is coming from Tetuan. One of the, of the ways we can use is the simple model. If we have a, a lot of oil in the Caballos formation, probably the best option to charge the reservoirs will be a Tetuan formation. That's, that's the easy way to explain. Um, and here we have the information about the gas geochemistry, and it's, it's very, we have very important points here. The first one is that the, the methane, here you can see the concentration of the methane from zero to 100%. Here you can see the isotopic composition. 
And according to the composition, we don't have dry methane here. We, we have a lot of heavy gases. We, we, the, the gas in general is wet in, in all these samples that we have for, for the basin. That, that's in, an important point because it is very common when you have a gas that is related with the oil window, then uh, you, you, you have the option to have that, uh, that ethane, propane, and butane. Uh, here with the relation between the isotopic composition of the C2, C2 and C3, we can see the range, a range of maturity going from maybe um, 0.8 to 0.6 in vitrinary reflectance, which is, is tying in general with, with the um, petroleum system modeling. And finally, using the, the, the Pernaton and Prinzhofer model, we can see that the, most of the gas is, is coming from primary cracking. That, that means it's coming from the oil window and maybe, maybe some as uh, correlate with, with uh, 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 the, the early uh, secondary cracking processes, but, but most of the uh, uh, samples are related with primary cracking. Again, this is very important point in order to calibrate the, the modeling. Here we have an, an example of the petroleum system modeling, 1D modeling. Uh, we are using an example for the El Sapo Depot Center, uh, which is one of the, of the biggest in the basin, and is the, is the depot center or the syncline, the productive of salt rock that we can use to explain all these fields here located in the Ortega and Tetuan area. Um, according to the results of the modeling, the Cretaceous section, the Cretaceous soft rock section, uh, got the maximum burial depth um, at the Mayos in middle Mayos in maybe. And the maturity level is high is into the gas window. And probably this is the highest maturity level we can model in the basin. And as a consequence of that maturity level, we have a transformation ratio very high. Here you can see that by, by the maximum burial depth, the Tetuan formation was in a very high transformation ratio. And right now we have uh, that unit in, um, in, um, with a transformation ratio uh, very close to 100%. Uh, here we, we have a, a map, a distribution map of the productive of source rock. Uh, we, we have different synclines where the soft rock intervals uh, reach the maturity level uh, enough to explain the hydrocarbons we have. But it's important to, to talk that we, we don't have a huge uh, productive. Uh, we have a small productive related with some of the synclines. And uh, that this is a different model than the one we, we had, for example, in Middle Mac, when we have three, but every one of them uh, are, are really huge. Here we have a different situation. It, it is important because maybe that could be the reason we have a very different amount of oil in place between these two basins. While in Middle Mac, we have uh, 18 billions of oil in place. Here we have just 3.2. Uh, that's important in order to, to calculate how much oil we, we, we have, uh, uh, how much jet to find we have in the basin. And for, uh, for other synclines or other depot centers, we have uh, thermal maturity levels uh, that are, are low than this. But, is uh, that's the reason we, we have some oil, some heavy oil, where that are related with early generation <laughs> or maximum peak of generation. Uh, excuse me, jo just a moment. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Finally, we have a, a summary of the petroleum system. This is a proposal. 
for the petroleum systems in the basin. In, uh, we have at least three soft rock intervals. We, uh, I was talking about Tetuan and La Luna, but also we, ha we have information, we have data that show that from the bambuca shale, we can get uh, some oil. We, we have some intervals. The hydrocarbon potential is not too high like this, like the Tetuan and La Luna, but we have that option. In, <clears throat> in terms of reservoirs, we have Caballos, we have Monserrate, we have Doima, and we have Onda formation. The main reservoir in terms of oil in place discovered is Caballos formation. <coughs> I'm sorry. And, uh, Caballo formation is the main reservoir. We, we have uh, at, at least 50% uh, of the oil in place look, in, in this uh, unit. We have very good seals uh, located in the units above these reservoirs, espe especially for uh, Caballos. We have the Tetuan limestone in, uh, in Montserrat. We, we have also faces uh, for, for um, the Paleocene units or, or late Maastrichtian units. The overburden uh, sequence is including uh, late Cretaceous and uh, Cenozoic sequence. Uh, about the formation traps, we, we have at least three event, events of the formation. We have early deformation here, and which is very, very, very good for, for uh, Caballos and Montserrat. It's very good for the timing. And also we have the formation during Miocene and uh, Pliocene. Obviously, according to this model, the, the traps or, or the structures that uh, are related just with this deformation event uh, could be the highest uh, time and risk. In terms of generation accumulation, uh, using the basin modeling and using the oil information, we know that we have two poles of charge. And we have, according to that, we have two critical moments in the basin. And uh, in terms of the petroleum system we can propose, it's, it's common to, to find in some papers this distribution, this, this proposal, Tetuan Caballos and La Luna Monserrate. But this, this proposal uh, is including Guando Field. It's including a, 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 the Guando Field that is located in the in the Inster Cordillera. If you put out Guando, maybe the, the best option to explain in a general way the petroleum system for the basin is the Tuan Caballos and La Luna Caballos. That means this uh, petroleum system are including also the oil we have in the Cenozoic unit, but uh, we use Caballos because it's, the, because it's the main reservoir in terms of the oil in place in the basin. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks a lot. I will be checking uh, if you have any question in the chat. Good morning. Uh, we are going to continue with the with the presentation. Now we are going to talk about the protectivity of the Cenozoic from the Upper Magdalena Valley. This is the project with the National University. First, we are going to talk something about introduction. Later, Javier Guerrero is going to explain stratigraphy and basin evolution. And I am going to talk again about the reservoirs and seals. Later, Alvaro Vargas from Litófera is going to explain the gravimetry and magnetometric. And 
Maria Daroca, we're going to explain seismic interpretation and place that we have found in the basin. And at the end, we are going to talk something about the petroleum system with all this new information. This, this project is part of the project number 491 between the National University and ANH, that is the evaluation of the exploratory potential of the Cenozoic unit from the Upper Magdalena Valley, phase one. And in the second phase, we are going to talk more about the jet to find the, in order to define the place and possible leaks. Well, I am not going to explain what is the Upper Magdalena Valley because Cesar Moore explained us where the basin is located. This is the exploratory wells in the basin. There are 311 wells, and we have discovered 52 fields in all the basin. And in the 60s, we discovered Dina Tertiary. This is the curve that shows us how was the drilling activity in the basin through the time. The most activity was in the 1980s, 1989, where we drilled more than 100 wells in the basin, and we discovered 19 wells in the basin. And in this time was when we discovered the San Francisco field. That was the reason the lot of activity during the next decades. This is the 2D assignment data in the basin. There are 182 programs, 17,793 kilometers of 2D assignment information. As you can see, almost we have good coverage of all the basin with seismic information. Uh, we don't have data where the basement is appropriate in the basin. And we had acquired 24 3D seismic programs in the basin that they covered 2,560 2, kilometers of 2D seismic information. We have seven programs here in the Hiranosu Basin and 17 programs in the Neibasu Basin. 19 of these programs were with development for force or meal fields, and only five of these programs were for only exploratory focus. If we see the depth that the well have reached in this basin, we see that 72 wells reach a deep greater than 10,000 feet. 100, 140 wells have a deep of at least 5,000 feet. And 138 wells reach this between 5,000 to 10,000 feet. And if we see the, average, the amount of the area of the basin and the number of exploratory wells, we see that we have one exploratory well for every 69 square kilometers in the basin. Now, Javier is going to explain the stratigraphy and structural evolution. Well, good morning to everybody. And we want to thank again the ANH for giving us the opportunity to study the, their database. I am going to talk about the stratigraphy, sedimentology, and basin evolution uh, uh, from the area. Internet is kind of slow here, so I, please excuse me if some, there is some delay in the, the slides. This is the, the stratigraphy from the area. We have basically the Cretaceous system. We have Paleogene, and an early Miocene unit, which is very important because it's very big and has to do with the first uh, uh, petroleum production because of this overload on, on this Cretaceous sequence. Both the Cretaceous and the Cenozoic sequences are fed from the west of the basin. And that changes only later on during the late Miocene when the Eastern Cordillera is uplifted. So we have several important conformities. There is one between the Cretaceous and the Cenozoic. There is a change from a back arc 
basin of foreland. This is the western side, as it's I said, of the basin. So the whole time the input is coming from rocks from the west, volcanics and metamorphics mainly, and shared very importantly in this part of the section. In the, uh, the Honda group, previously to the deposit of the Honda group, there's a huge event of erosion and uh, uplift of all this strata. And in some places, all the sequence is eroded. So the Honda group is on top of a crystalline basement, Jurassic rocks. And, and there is uh, the base of this unconformity, the base of the Honda group has been very precisely dated in 13.6 million years. And this second unconformity has to do with the uplift of the Eastern Cordillera and it deposited the Napaf and Gigante formations. And this will be the first deposits of the Magdalena River flowing towards the north. And the last unconformity puts in some areas, in Giraldot area, it places the Mesa formation on top of the Honda group. So this late Miocene sequence is eroded. So we have seen that there is some trouble in identifying sometimes in field maps, in the photography, and uh, also in the drilling between these two units, the Honda group, and the one and I group. So we had to define a few criteria to make sure that we were uh, identifying those. The main situation of the Honda group will be this unconformity. As, as I said, it's 13.6 million years. Previous to that, we during the middle Miocene, and also part of the lower part, during the Langian, all these Cretaceous units were exposed along with the one and I group. A very important thing is that the Wallagram dye group is conformable apparently on the Cretaceous. We see no angularity here. There is maybe some erosion and conformity that has been documented in other areas like in the foothills, in the Llanos foothills, but it, in essence is a continuous sequence. So we use this criteria. If it is continuous, it will be the Wallan dye group. It is preserved only in a few synclines. So that affects the prospectivity. The anticlines were eroded away during the Langian event. And after that, there is subsidence and begins a couple of million of years later on, begins the deposition of the Honda group. This will be the La Victoria formation. It has these sandstones in here, which will be our main target, our main interest. They are not, they are continuous in the direction of the flow of the rivers only, but not to the north or to the south. So that's very important to consider. And this will be the regional seal, it will be the La, uh, the Villa Vieja formation, and it's made in mudstones, but there is also some reservoirs in the lower part of the unit here in, in a few fields. The same situation from close by area, again, the synclines that preserve the Guarandai group and the whole Cretaceous just folded and folded before the Honda group. So the oil for, of all these reservoirs, which is basically the whole Cretaceous because it's mainly limestones, the whole sequence, the regressive and transgressive units are limestones, will be charging the Honda group reservoirs in here. And the Honda group is a structure. So there will be traps in some areas. And in fact, some of it has been discovered in the Honda group. A very different situation is in the Wallandai, which in the Sinclinai, in the Wallandai in Sinclin, is again the same situation is conformable on top of the Cretaceous. So that would be the main criteria to recognize this. And besides that, the composition, as I will show you later on, is a very important criteria. This is from the Columbia Sincline, again, the same situation. So when, wherever we see this situation, we are sure that this is the Warren Dye Group, also the drilling cuttings uh, just allow us to say that. A little bit about the paleogeography of the area of South America, a few years back, we just uh, saw that so there is no Eastern Cordillera. It's a very important point. There is most of the centers like there is no Eastern Cordillera. So the foothills are in front. The foreland is in front of the Central Cordillera. So the Central Cordillera is the source area during the Cenozoic for most, for all the units that we know from the foreland up to the Llanos foothills. So it covers the whole area. There is a continuous gradual basis change that indicates that there is no Eastern Cordillera because it's a, there is a depositional area. So it's impossible that the Cordillera could be uplifted at any of these times. Same thing from the late Eocene to Oligocene. 
the units that are in there, still there is no eastern cordillera, some marine influence in some areas, used with lakes and uh, rivers, main river areas. Important formations are Potrillo, Doima, Middle and Upper Guanabara, Esmeraldas and Mugrosa. And from the future Eastern Cordillera, we have the concentration and Usme formation in, in, this, in this area. During the Miocene happened two very important things. And I, as I was mentioning in the early and middle Miocene, during the early Miocene, we have these marine influence areas that deposited the Pebas, the Leon, and uh, also the Santa Teresa, La Sira, and Tune formation over here. And it has uh, maximum thickness is about 700 meters. So that's important because it's on top of the Honda, of the Guananda, excuse me, of the Guananda group below the unconformity. So that would have produced maturity of the Cretaceous uh, rocks just before the Honda event. And during that event, the Lankian event, the whole sequence was exposed, as I was mentioning. And then during the late, uh, upper part of the middle Miocene, we have the Honda group, which is basically La Victoria, um, the Vieja formations, and the real formation from the middle of During the late Miocene, the Eastern Cordillera is uplifted. We have for the first time, the first time the rivers flowing, the Magdalena River flowing towards the north. So the Magdalena River is born and the Eastern Cordillera is born. So we have in front, of this area, we have the basically the Guayao formation in front of the present day Yalfu Hills. And on the western side of the coastal cordillera, we have the Neiva and here are the formation. So we have a four land uh, depositing in both sides of the cordillera. This is um, from the Guanabana well. Uh, um, this is our interpretation now. And uh, this is uh, the Honda group. Unconformable on top of these units, the one that is thicker here than in here. And it is was nicely shown by uh, Hokol. They saw the unconformity and, and all the Cretaceous halted below it and they targeted this uh, unit, which they, at the moment they thought was La Tabla. Later on, they just reached the top of the Doima formation. They saw the unconformity and they named it, and they used the name Barcelosa which will be the Tune formation. And, and that will be below the unconformity. That will be the sequence, the, the marine sequence or marine influence sequence that I mentioned. And the reservoirs will be in the center. So it will be here in the Honda group, these sensors. So maybe this could be a, an important target that is a secondary target rather than the, than the upper Cretaceous that was not reached in, in, in the drilling. This is a, another view from other area. Over here is the Honda group, unconformable, of course, on top of the, in this case, the Caballos formation and some of the Seca formation here. And towards the west, this is on top of the, of the crystalline basement of the Saldana and the sides. Same situation here, nicely exposed, Chicora area. The whole Cretaceous is in contact with the unconformity. So during the, Miocene and Pliocene was produced the maximum peak of the generation, and these units were being charged. And the traps also, some of these traps are older. They were produced in the mid early, in the lower part of the middle Miocene, but later on, they, some of those faults were reactivated during the late Miocene. And of course, the Honda group is structured, so there will be several opportunities for trap. Same thing, Warandai area. High locality, we have the whole sequence exposed on top of the Cretaceous only in those areas. One of the few anticlines in which the Wallandai group is exposed. This is the top of the basement, indicating that the deepest areas of the basement are in the eastern side of the basin. On the western side, it has been more uplifted than on the eastern side. This is a study we did a few years back. We dated with Aragon Argon. We obtained between 13.8 and 12.2. This is in the Tatacoa Desert area. We did magnetostratigraphy. We dated with that and, and with the Argon Argon ages. And later on, Anderson also collected some the trital zircon from the area and obtained just about the same ages, a little bit older, but those would be maximum ages. So still, we have the magnetostratigraphy. They show 
interestingly, that the Gerson uh, massive was uplifted between 5.8 and 3.6 million years. And uh, that would be the latest Miocene and early, early Pliocene. So the Eastern Cordillera is not a full barrier at this time. Currents from the uh, Honda group in the La Victoria formation towards the Southeast, also in the lower part of the Villa Vieja formation. But that pattern is reversed in the, in the top of the Honda group and the currents go to the West. So we have the first indication of uplift of the Eastern Cordillera at about 12 million years. This latest, latest paper from Montes and others from this year, they also re revisited the area and, and considered all evidence of previous papers, collected one more sample that agrees very well from our dates. But basically we continue using, of course, the magneto stratigraphy. And within this frame, we conclude that the oldest possible age is 13.6 here, which is a very important conformity age. And also the top will be at about 12 million years. That's a, a very precise dating of the unit. This is how it looks in the field. So you can see it's a lot of mudstone in some areas with a few sandstones. But in some places, these sandstones are connected and it could, they could reach up to 27 meters. So those will be the reservoirs. But in some areas, these rocks will be sealed to some of the Cretaceous. This is from uh, the Villa uh, Vieja information, I believe. For, in any case, from the Honda group, we have uh, these erosional surfaces here all over the place when the meandering river moves over the previous floodplain. This will be paleosols, all of those. And the reservoirs will be these sandstones that in this case has a four three meter stick. But as I mentioned, in some areas, uh, they could pile one on top of another and will be up to 27 meters thick. And as you know, they are reservoir on the foil. It will be the uh, upper part of the Honda Group. This is the Villa Vieja formation. And that will be the regional seal for the, for the lower part of the Honda group and also from the, for the lower part of the Villa Villa formation, which have produced some oil. The thickness of the sandstones, and they could be up to 10 meters thin each mountain river and six meter thick in the Villa Villa formation. They could pile on one on top of another. And, and we have multi-story bodies that, as I mentioned, would be the main reservoirs. This is a very important concept, the width of the meander, the width of the river and the width of the meander because that would be the maximum thickness to the borders of the meandering belt where we could find the sandstones in which we are interested. And those were the ones that I named uh, Tataco and Chuchu yeah, that could be followed. This is very much like the Honda group looked like. These four kilometers with meandering belts are separated by large areas where we have mostly, mostly mudstone. So we can follow the reservoirs in this direction but when we move to the north or the south, or the south we lose them. The greatest streams are only uh, yes, located in the upper part in the foreland today, and they change very fast to the, to the meandering. So most of the area is meandering, which we believe is how the Gona group was deposited. This is an example from Argentina, looking at those meandering belts, how they, they look like this, the meandering in a single moment but they could be up to four kilometers width and those will be the bodies that we are, will be interested in following. This is a, a very important to differentiate between the Honda group and the Wallandai group. It's a picture of the Wallandai group. This would be the Hoyon Hoyon or Chicoral formation. This is composed by class of chert that are oceanic chert and also metamorphic and igneous quartz fragment and also metamorphic rocks coming from the central cordillera at the time in a foreland that, as I mentioned, did not have any barrier in the front. Again, which are conglomerates from the Wallandai group. This is in the road over from Bogota to Kanban. And this will be the type section of the Wallandai group in the Wallandai area, again, this these chair fragments are very important because are, those are the ones that allow us to differentiate between the Wallandai group and the Honda group in the drilling cuttings. This is the Pottery Geo formation, which will be the middle part of the Wallandai group in the type section of the Wallandai group. This is how 
those rock looking thing sections will be oceanic charts. They are mainly made by radiolines and diatoms recrystallized. Very fossiliferous, of course, very different from the Cretaceous rocks. And uh, we have this large one would be the diatoms, the large ones. So these pieces are the ones that we find in the rocks over here, in the sandstones of the one and I group down here. Another here, we have these metamorphic rocks and the single grain quartz, single crystal quartz. Again, some metamorphic fragments from the Wallenberg group and the chart fragments everywhere. Over here, here, see the chart fragments and the metamorphic fragments. So the, the mark will be that, that should be seen in, in the drilling cuttings. Again, this is the top of the Wallenberg group. This will be the Doima formation and uh, a lot of quartz and a lot of graph. Metamorphic quartz also schist for the metamorphic rocks. History changed a lot. We reached the Honda group above the unconformity, posterior to all the other units. We have some igneous volcanic fragments here with some fine crystals in a in a matrix of fine grain, fine crystals, small crystals. And uh, this the same thing. A lot of this volcanic material that will be extremely different from the Malandine. This is again also from the on the group, a lot of feldspars. So they should not be confused, but they have in fact been confused in the geological maps and also in the in the drillings. And that has exploratory implications. This uh, is from the Mesa formation, which is the top unit. This will be Pliocene and it is completely volcanic. Some of those units will be topacious and they will be also in conformity between this one and the Honda group in the Hirardot area. So again, situation, my situation in which we have this source and reservoir units, some of them could be sealed here by, by the Honda group, but some of the oil is going up to the conformable unit and it has been stored in these sandstones in the lower part of the Villavieja formation. Same situation again, so I have some shown this before and very different with the one and I see clients. So those were the criteria we used to differentiate the two units in the field and in the also in the drillings. And that's very important not to confuse them because when people believe they are drilling in the wall and I group, I start trying to find these units and they cannot find them because they are not continuous in the wall and I group, it's very different strategy. So they better not be confused. This is a block diagram. This is the from the Wallandai area, this will be the type area of the Wallandai, and this will be the situation. This is looking towards the southwest, looking towards the central cordillera. And this is the Honda group, La Victoria, and conformal pole on all these units. It will be the Villa Vieja formation, and some of those will be quaternaries or the Mesa formation. The Honda group is doesn't show in this one, but the Honda group is a structure, so as I was showing. It is kind of a very interesting unit, and I will stop on that. Thank you very much, and please, Shahid, go ahead. Thank you, Javier. Now, we are going to talk about the reservoirs, seals, and something about the paleogeographic maps. This is the stratigraphy of the Cenozoic units. We have the reservoirs or potential reservoirs in the Palermo and Tesalia members of the Chicoral formation. The same thing happened with the Doima formation and La Victoria, that is the form part of the Honda group. And we have secondary reservoirs in some intercalation of sandstone in the Bache and Potredillo units and in some part of the Villa Vieja formation. And the main seals are the Potredillo formation, Villa Vieja, and we have local seals in the Bache, eh, Potredillo, and Doima formation because in some part of the basin they have some chain intercalation that can act as real seals. 
This is the Chigoral formation. This is the map that shows the distribution of the unit at subsurface and the data of porosity that we have defined according to the logs of sonic and density and neutron logs. And in some ways, we have tied this data with the core analysis. We can see that in the in this unit, we had a poor to fair wells here in the south part of the basin, but in some areas, we had a good quality of the porosity in this unit. This is for Portuguese formation. In some part of the basin, we have some sandstone intercalation. This is an example in the Bavilla one. This is a well located in the western part of the basin. We can see that we have porosity values between 9 and 15 percent here in the dark areas in the locks. And this is the map that shows again the distribution of this unit up there in the basin. We have a good porosity values here in this north part of the basin. You can see that uh, you don't have a uh, unit continuity in all the racing. We have only a, a specific area with this with this unit. This is for Toima formation, well Bavilla one. We can see the porosity values here in the in this. We have the total porosity with the neutron and density logs and the deep resistivity. We have the value between 12 and 19%. And here we are comparing the data from density, neutron, and sonic. We have a higher values in the sonic log. Here is the behavior of the unit. We can see the load of substance and some chains. This is this in this part of the base in these chains can act as local seals. This is the distribution of porosity of this unit in the basin. We had in the North Para good values of porosity. And we had a fair or poor values here in the south part of the Hirardot of the Neva Subbasin. Sub For La Victoria Formation, we had a better distribution here in the Mr. Part of the of the basin, and we have a very good data of porosity. They are very good or excellent. Here is an example in the well Rio Seibas too, when we have some production in some of these sandstones. Uh, La Victoria Formation are the main reservoir in the Dina Tertiary, Andalusia Sur, La Jagua, Rio Seibas, Espino. Nunda and Nunda Southwest. And this is the distribution of the porosity in the Villavieja formation in all the basin where it's present. In the basin, we had a very good value of porosity where we have some development of the sandstone. No? As we have talked, there are some chain intercalation in this unit that they act as seals. Uh, with the electrophasis, we try to identify better the fascia distribution in the in the basin. We have the mountains. We have here an area of no accumulation or where is the development the alluvial fans. Later, we had like, the brighter rivers, the meander rivers. And according to the response, of the logs, we have to identify these facies here in the basin. Here is an example in the well, it's kind of one well, when we can see the unit that they have a gamma ray of cylindrical shape uh, with low values of gamma ray. And according to the thickness of the sandstones and conglomerates and the and the 
layers of clay stones and the ratio of sun and total thickness, we define the main phases change here in the in, in, in this area. Later, we define the by the rivers, we have an increase in the chain layers, but they are thin in these brighter rivers, and the ratio of sand total thickness is greater than 75%. Later, we have rivers with low sinuosity, like Rio Saibas 1, and we, we have an increase of the chains in this unit. And at the end, we have the medium to high sinusity rivers where we have a sink layer of sandstone and the mainly lithology are chains. According to that, we made the paleogeographic map from the Chicoral formation. We have the alluvial fans in the western part of the basin, and we have the rivers with high sinuosity in the eastern part of the basin. Here is the distribution and here is an example in the well Babilla one. This is the map that shows the structural behavior of the unit at depth. We only have in, in some part of the basin this unit present at depth. This is from Portrillo Formation. We had uh, rivers with low to with low sinuosity, and here in most of the basin we have rivers with high sinuosity in this part. This is the, an example of the well Caxan Norte one. This is the Potrerillo Formation, the map, the structural map that show how in this unit up there. And this is the paleographic map of Doima formation. We had uh, in all the western part of the basin, we have the alluvial fans, the rivers with low sinuosity, and here the rivers with high sinuosity. This is an example of the well Aleliwa. This is the distribution at depth of this unit, Doima. Here is the La Victoria formation. We see the distribution up there. And we have here the rivers with low sinuosity and river with high sinuosity in the eastern part of the of the basin. And here the structural map of this view. And at the end we have the Villa Vieja formation the distribution of this unit. The same, the river with medium, with low or medium sinuosity, and here the rivers with high sinuosity that they have more content of chase. Now, Alvaro can continue with the gravimetry and magnetometry. Thank you. Welcome to the Upper Magdalena Valley Actual Basin Basement Map based on potential fields, gravity and magnetics. Potential fields help track basement structure and help to define the weather basement surface in data sparse areas. In the Upper Magdalena Valley Basin boundaries, there are few wells drilled that reach a high density basement. We use the potential fields information in order to help define the best surface on the basement and its structures, respecting the data of the wells and the seismic interpretation. First of all, I will explain the methodology followed, then the information sources for potential fields, the new magnetic and gravity maps, and finally the basement map. 
We began by collecting and processing potential field data. Next, we look for wells that have drilled to the high density basement, looking for contour points. Finally, we calculate the best surface that represents the basement using all the basement information. In this slide, you can see in black colors all the airborne programs included. Red tortoise lines to present a terrestrial program also included. The red polygon here represent the limits of the basin. The areas around the basement were covered with airborne acquisition programs information. We work a larger area because it is necessary to include as much information as possible to avoid border effects. If you look carefully, the interpretation of basement will not be perfect due to the lack of information in the center of the basin here. This is the topographic map in the area. It shows the location of some reference population within the file study. After processing all data, we have the next new maps. These magnetic maps are produced by the combination of terrestrial and airborne data and shows you the complexity of basement. Please focus in magnetic signature in the Eastern Mountain Range structures formed by the exposure of the basement of the basin rim poles here and here. This total magnetic intensity map reduced to the point shows the major direction of top cortical structures inside the basin. All the basement discontinuities are product of the recent slightly slip deformation type and have major influence in the, in the sedimentary structures on top. The cross of the continent is the least dense. The Uge anomaly map shows that toward to the southeast of the area, its density is higher compared to the north of the basin. This is related to the exposure of the basement rocks on the surface as shown in the, in the regional geological map in blue and purple colors. This figure is very important to understand how to do a controlled gravity inversion. In the A figure, on left side, it is shown that each control point, it is now what is the depth of the high density basement, basement and the density profile of the sediments in this and this and these locations. Below in B, it shows that it is gravitational contribution of milligals composed by regional and residual here. The residual anomaly is produced only by the sediments and the regional anomaly is produced by the basement here. In C, we connect the control points with the residual anomaly answering the following question. Taking into account the depth of the top of the basement in all the control points and always following and respecting the gravity data in the entire area. At what deep is the best surface generated that represent the boundary between the basement and the sediments? Here, the location of known basement controls in the basin taken from wells data and seismic. Information gradually concentrates towards the northern part of the basin. This is the Upper Magdalena Valley actual basin basement surface we found following this technique. Now it is possible to observe in blue colors where the largest sedimentary deposits are, which in the Bogue anomaly maps were not evident. More than 21,000 feet were found below the basement, below the master pole, bordering the eastern margin of the basin. To the east to the, of the population of IP, more than 25,000 feet have been calculated. And in the region of the Carmen de Aquipicala to the north, we have more than 28,000 feet of sediments. 
Finally, I have to thank the ENH and the National University represented here by Professor Javier Guerrero, or my oil colleagues, and especially to my friends from Litosfera listed in, that, in this slide. Thank you very much for your attention. Now, Maria will speak to you. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay, so I will now present the results of the seismic interpretation and the structural configuration of the upper Magdalena basin. In the first time, in the, in the first time we will see what data are available in the basin and how we carried out the process of well seismic tie in this project. In a second time, I will present structural maps for basement and cenozoic formation we generated thanks to seismic interpretation. Then we are going to describe structural style of the basin through cross section. And we will finish with the identification of cenozoic opportunity in this basin. So first of all, in this basin, 1,305 seismic were interpreted for a total of 15,010 kilometers that cover all the basin, where we don't have any seismic lines because of um, basement height. And we also work with the information of 246 wells. Among them, 64 wells uh, have, their, have their own borehole seismic data. In Hirardot Subbasin, we have 20 wells uh, 23 wells, uh, eight with vertical seismic profile and 15 with check shot. For neighbor, we have 41 wells, six of them with VCP and 35 with check shot. We can see in this map that um, all these wells are well distributed all uh, over the entire basin, which allowed us to achieve a good regional seismic well type. Thanks to well information and geological map, uh, we interpreted 10 horizons, one for basement, four horizons of the top of Cretaceous formation, such as Caballo, Tetuan, Loma Gorda, and La Tabla formation, and, four, and five for Cenozoic formation, uh, such as uh, Chicorel, Potrello, Doima, and we subdivided in the group, the Onda group in La Victoria and Villa Vieja formation. Moreover, we have been able to identify, to identify at least two unconformity, one paraconformity at the base of Chicorel formation in the Paleocene, and an angular one at the base of the Victoria formation in the Middle Miocene. The Paleocene unconformity is, is due to a change in uh, structural configuration. The basin passed from back arc to fallen basin, and the Miocene one are related to uh, to the deformation erosional event due to the uplift of central cordillera. Actually, um, in some part of the basin and mainly in the neighbor and near the eastern deformation front, um, we can also document an angular unconformity on the top of Onda group and on the top of Huila group. These are due to the uplift of eastern cordillera and the exhumation of uh, Gerson Massif. So thanks to the seismic interpretation, we elaborated structural map at the top of each formation of interest. Uh, here, we can see the structural map for the basement, where we can observe that the basin configuration is characterized by a northeast southwest regional system fault, such as uh, Garçon Algeciras in the eastern boundary, Baraja Suarez fault in the uh, uh, Geraldo Basin. And in the western boundary, we have the Chusma San Francisco Fault, and in the south part, the Pacarmo Fault. We have identified five main depot centers in the basin uh, Carmen de Apicalas and Klein in Guelandas and Klein in the Geraldo Basin, Nevas, Neva Tarkis and Klein, Suas, Suasas and Klein, and Mokoa for the Neva Basin. In the Geraldo sector, we can observe two depot centers. So the first one is, Apica, is Carmen de Apicalas Incline, 
in the eastern part, reaching a depth of at least 16,000 feet. Um, this depot center belongs to the eastern Cordillera, but uh, we included it in the, in the project because of the continuity of the petroleum system during uh, Cretaceous foreland. To the west side, side we can observe the Gualandais incline here. Uh, which is a more reduced depot center with a maximum depth of 15,000 feet. So here we can see the Apicala, the Kamen Apicala in the Poland I think, and here. And the neighbor sub basin has the biggest depot center here in the central part of the basin, represented by the Neva Sankline and the Taki Sankline in the southern part. The depot center reached uh, 18,000 feet near Guanawana one well. As we can see in this seismic line, we have Guanabana one well here and the deepest uh, sedimentary sequences near the uh, Betania San Jacinto Fault, this one. And in the southern part, we have the Takis incline uh, where we reach uh, 16,000 feet near the Gigante well that we can see here in this seismic line. We have uh, <clears throat> the two uh, front of the formation here. Uh, the gas one to see that's fault. And here we have Betania San Francisco, uh, Betania San Jacinto uh, fault. We have a gigante well here. And in this part of the basin, we have uh, 16,000 feet of sediments. If we go south, we identify the fourth uh, depot center represented by the Suasa incline. And as we can see in the seismic line, this depot center is between two front of the two deformation fronts with tectonic uh, transport, with an opposite tectonic transport. The western uh, boundary is the Acevedo Fault and the eastern boundary is the Suasa Fault. And in the southernmost part of the Neibasa Basin, near the city of Mokoa, we can observe a shallow uh, depot center that reach uh, 80,000 feet. So here we can appreciate three cross sections representing the structural site in the Giraldo Basin. The first one is a transversal to the regional structure, this one. And the B and C are along the strike. We can observe that here, uh, the San Antonio, San Antonio Fault in this part, divided the Giraldo Basin into two areas. And uh, in the Western part, we have a very intense deformation with Cretaceous on surface and basement heights, and with some local uh, outcrop of the Wallandite group here in the, in the same climb. The second cross section uh, represents this western, this western part with a very complex structural style. And uh, at the eastern part, the sector is less deformed and presents an important thickness of the Onda group, directly lying on Cretaceous deformed uh, formation and some. Uh, basement height. Here, this is simple, we can see it in the third uh, cross section. In the Neva Basin, we identified four uh, structural domains. The first one is related to eastern boundary of the basin here. And he is characterized by a thick skin tectonic uh, represented by reverse fault with tectonic transport to the northwest with a strike slip uh, component, such as gas on adjustment system fault, we can see here, here. and here is the Baraja uh, fault in the north part. The second one is related to the western boundary and is characterized by river system fault with high deep angle and the tectonic transport to the southeast, such as uh, um, Chusma fault and San Francisco fault, and also uh, the um, the um, Betania San Jacinto Fault in this part of the basin. The third structural domain is in the northern part of the Neva Sub Basin in this part, west of the Andalusia Fault that we can see in this section, is characterized with the, by the Onda group failing a basement paleotopography with minor transpassive deformation such as uh, strike slate fault and positive flower structure. And we have also some normal gravitational fault because of the uh, paleotopography of the basement. 
Uh, in this domain, the field Rio Seibas in Andalusia are producing from Onda Group, where Andalusia, uh, we can see it here, it's associated, it's associated to stratigraphical uh, plays related to incision valley. And Rio Seibas in this part uh, is associated to normal fold in some on-lap and paleotopography in La Victoria formation. Their first domain, are the seed um, represented by leading embricate fan in this part here, in the central part of the of the basin, uh, with a with a, tra a tectonic transport to the northeast. In this domain, we have the Wellandite group constrained in synclinal nucleus and overlapping on regional or conformity. Uh, the Dina um, the Dina tertiary field is associated to this trap and products from Gwellandai group. Here we can appreciate the structural map for Cenozoic formation, Chicoral formation, or Potredo formation in Doima formation. In this work, we have we make a special attention of this formation in order to propose stratigraphical opportunities. So we can observe that the distribution are not continuous in the basin, and the, and the neighbor sub-basin has the best distribution. Thanks to seismic, we can see that the Guarante group is preserved in very local synclined nu nucleus, as we can see here in Babija Well One, or here uh, between the San Francisco Fault and um, the synclined Isle of Palo Grande. Or also in uh, the neighbor syncline here, or uh, between Andalusia Fault and Barraja Fault, we have a flexural subsidence that allows the conservation of the of the of the formation here and here we can see it. In addition to structural plays, the opportunity for this group are related to the unconformity at the top and at the base, where we identified overlapping and overlapping on regional this, uh, unconformity. In this case, we have the structural map for Cenozoic formation, La Victoria, and we can see we can see the dispersion is more continuous than the Wallandite group that reveals the unconformity uh, as the base of La Victoria. The Onda group is mainly constrained in the eastern part of the basin, where we also have all the main depot centers. And for this formation, in addition to structural plays, the opportunities for this group are related to the unconformity at the base, where we, where we identified overlapping on regional unconformity, as we can see in this. Uh, in the seismic line for the Hidardoso Basin or in the seismic line uh, near the Babira Well One uh, in the Neighbors of Basin. Um, also, we have, thanks to a very precise basement mapping in the northern part of, of Neighbor, we have been able to identify um, and map incision valley which we can appreciate in the northern of Neiva and in the southern uh, part of Girardo, as we can see here. So to conclude, uh, from the seismic interpretation of about 15,000 kilometers, it has been possible to identify structural and stratigraphic opportunities in the Cenozoic sequences in the Girardo basin, sub-basin, but mainly in the Neiva sub-basin. Stratigraphic opportunity are uh, uh, of two different types. The first one is erosive, erosive related to onlap on regional unconformity and uh, subunconformity truncation in all the Cenozoic formation, and depositional uh, with a lateral depositional pinch out um, because of the kind of depositional environment of the formation. Um, we have gradual lateral uh, facies changes from flood plain or uh, to meandering, meandering river, for, for instance. And also we have, um, we have the incision valley, which is a stratigraphical play already proven in Andalusia field. So thank you very much. And I will now hand over to Edgar Sagiskaidus, who will speak about the geochemical model.
Okay, yeah, at the end, we are going to talk something about the petroleum system. This part was made for by Fabio Cordova, but he has some problem with the internet connection, and I am going to explain it. Uh, in the Upper Magdalena Valley, we have identified five intervals with potential to generate petroleum in the Cretaceous sequence. Two main intervals are related with the Tetuan and Loma Gorda formation. Loma Gorda formation is the same that Cesar Mora talked about La Luna formation. And we have three secondary intervals related to Bondita. Caballos formation, the middle part of Caballos, and El Cobre formation that is part of the Olini group. For this, we analyze all the samples of rock that there is in the ANH and the oils and the gases in the base. This is an example of the geochemical profile of the well Nilo-1 in the Neva Sud Basin. We can see the highest values of TOC and IS-1 and hydrogen index in Loma Gorda formation and in the Tetuan formation. And we have the important values in a cobre formation and ondita. This is the, the same, the geochemical profile for the Boga one well in the Girardot Sub Basin. We can see here the Loma Gorda, the nice values, and in the Tetuan formation. And we see for ondita and the middle part, the chile part of the Caballos unit. For all these five units, we prepare a veras percentage map of the TOC or the actual TOC in the unit. This is the example of Loma Gorda formation. We can see the in the dark gray, the highest values, higher than 2% in the basin. This is for the Tetuan formation, the same. Values higher than two in dark gray. This is the vitrinite reflection, RO for uh, Loma Gorda formation. Here we had in the northeastern part of the basin, 0.6, and here in the middle part to the eastern part in Neva Sud Basin. And this is the, the same map. Between a reflection from the transformation, we had a highest maturity here in the north part of the basin. This valve was made only with data from wells. Uh, according to the relation of oils, we had identified five oil families, two in the Neva Sub Basin and three in the Girardot province. This is the distribution of SA oil family that they had a carbonate influence here in the Jaguar Los Mangos, La Ocha Field, and here in the north is related with Santa, Santa Clara, Santa Clara Sur, Loma Gorda, Tina Cretaceous, Palo Grande, Pijao, Tello Fields. Here is the distribution of SB oil family, more siliciclastic influence in the Neva Sud Basin is related with La Cañada, Norte, La Cañada, and Gigante Fields, and here in the north with San Francisco, Dina Tertiary, Tempranillo, Ato Nuevo, Rio Seipas. Uh, the fields in the Cenozoic unit that have oil from this unit are Dina Tertiary, Andalusia Sur, Rio Seipas, and El Espino Field. And now in the Girardoso Basin, we identify five families of oils. The first X, X, S, X, carbonate influence oil family is related with Kibaya, Toldado, and Toy Fields. We had a SJ, Mart input oil family, is related with Ortega One, Pacande, the Matachin and Chenche Fields, Abanico, and Totare and Ambrosia Fields. And we have the final, the five, the finally family associated with 
ex si siliciclaste hoy family in the pulley and son of the oil in the guando field. But only pulley has a relation with the tertiary reservoirs. With all this information, we define at least five petroleum systems, two in the neighborhood basin and three in Girardot area. This is from the Naval Sub Basin. The first is Tetuan Caballos. And we have related with the field of San Francisco, Dina One. This is the area where we believe that we have the active pop of oil generation. And here is the distribution of oil of this family. This cross section show us how is the, the position of depth of the Tetuan formation in the depot center, in, the, in one of the depot centers of the basin, where is the overburdened rocks, where is the stratigraphic distribution of the petroleum system. And this is the burial history of char from the well gigante one in the neighborhood basin. And we can identify that we had the critical moment more or less 10 million years ago, where the oil generation started here in this well gigante one. And we can see the different, the source rock, the reservoirs, the seeds, and the overburden rock. And this is the chart event from this family, the Tetuan Caballos Petroleum System in the Neiva Sub Basin. You see here in the source rock, Tetuan, the different reservoirs, Caballos, La Tabla, Doima, and the sandstones of the Honda Group, the different seals, the overburden rock, and the different events that for the structural or stratigraphic traps in the basin. And when the generation and migration started, the according to the, the, the modeling of the wells and the critical moment. This is the, the geographic distribution of the Loma Gorda La Tabla Petroleum System in Naiva Sub Basin and the fields that are related with this unit. And we did the same for the petroleum system in in Girardot Basin, here is the Tetuan area, where it's mature, and we have here the distribution of the petroleum system. This petroleum system, ah, this is from the previous, is related with Dina Tertiary, Andalusia, and Rio Selvas. And here is the Ondita La Tabla petroleum system, related with Puli, the source area, and the distribution of the oil. And the finally petroleum system that, that we identify is Loma, Loma Gorda Caballo here in associated with the depot center of El Sapo One and related with the fields of Stoy, Toldado, Quimbaya fields that are located here in this part of the, of the basin. I am going to show two examples of this is from Andalusia Surfield, associated with La Victoria Formation. Here is where its product, the production is associated with Inside Valley, like Maria Daroca explained us very well. And this other example is here from the Rio Seifa field that produced from La Victoria Formation. This is the different units and it's related with some normal false the development of, of the field. This is a, all this field, I believe that they had a structural and stratigraphic influence. This is the original oil place in Eibas Basin. I am, not, I am not going to talk much about that because Cesar Mora explained us very well. But here in this basin, it's very important that the fields that produce from the Cenozoic units are Dina Tertiary, Rio Seibas, Andalusia Sur, eh, the area of Pijao, Potrerillo, Indina, Terciario, Copetrol, La Jagua, and Espino, and they had original oil plate that 
558 million barrels of equivalent oil in the basin. They indicate us that there is a good opportunity or, the, or there is a good fields that produce from this unit and the information that that we see from the stratigraphic behavior, the seas, the reservoir, the structural pattern. I believe that there is a good opportunity to find new fields related with this unit. Uh, more detail in this final conclusion is going to be part of the second phase of this project. Okay, thank you. This is all that we want to present you about the prospectivity of these Cenozoic units in the Upper Magdalena Valley. Okay, thank you, Shahid, for, for your presentation, and Javier Guerrero, and Álvaro, and Maria. And now we will continue with the presentation of the ANH, where we will share into the blocks that we will offer in, in the Columbia Round 2021. So, Columbia Round 2021 at the Upper Magdalena Valley Basin, with some of the exploratory opportunities that we as seismic interpreters have identified. So a bit of the content. First, we'll share the location of the blocks, a bit of the history of exploration of the basin. We will share with you the extensive database that exists in the blocks that we were offering, a bit of the infrastructure, the geological framework that despite that we are Guerrero and Shahid have explained for, we will take a quick glance in terms of what is useful for our interpretations. A well summary of the areas that we are offering, some of the seismic interpretation that we have carried out, the prospectivity and the conclusions. So as an introduction, we got here the location. The location we are in the departments of Tolima and Neiva, we got four blocks. The first one is the BSM-4, the BSM-5, the BSM-7, and the BSM-37. There is a difference between the northern part and the southern part, where we got the difference between of the subbasins. These those ones are located in the Girardot the subbasins. Meanwhile, this one here is located at the Neiva subbasin. So that that changes a bit a little bit the target of the wells that have been drilled in the areas, and of course the 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 leads that we will be offering. So a bit of the history of exploration of the basin. Most of us, we know that the upper Magdalena Valley Basin is considered as the third most productive basin of Colombia. It produces around 18 million of barrel of oil per year from more than 30 fields. And the exploration goes back to the Texas Petroleum Company field discovered of Ortega Tetuan in 1951. According to the NH 2009, 630 million barrels of oil and 120 and 23 uh, giga cubic feet of gas have been discovered in 38 fields. 12, uh, 1,210 wells have been drilled and 145 seismic, seismic programs have been acquired in the area, including 3D and 2D seismic data. So for the northern part, of the blocks that the ANH will be offering, we got an amount of nine wells drilled. So Lima, Michu, Tomogo, Calarma, Kimbaya, Kimbaya, Istanbul, Gouda, and Guaini. All of them were drilled since 1988 to 2007. Most of them drilled by Hokol and Ecopetrol, with total depth around 2,000 to 6,000. Thousand. That's a, a good value in terms of we got shallow wells that are reaching the targets that are lower Cretaceous, and we got the Vegeta group and the Cavallos formation, and has been shown before. We got many contracts in this geological trend. We got contracts such as Bugambiles, 
Arequipalo, San Luis, Abanico, Ortega, Doima, Soldado, Tolima, and Chaparral. Most of them uh, signed by Hukol and Eco Patrol in the 1990s and the 2000s. Uh, most of them got us uh, around 10 wells drilled, with many of the wells drilled back, or the first wells drilled back maybe at the 1950s. This is the, the, the wells that are drilled in the southern part. We got a huge amount of wells, 23 wells, that has been maybe drilled in structural traps. Uh, despite the fact that we got some, uh, a huge amount of 3D seismic data, maybe any of the, of the, of the 3D have been uh, assessed in terms of stratigraphic conditions using geophysical data, such as QI. We got all of them as well as shallow wells, except for a couple of wells, such as the Alta Gracia too, that is 8,000 in total depth, La Colorada, the reach, 11,000 and granizo that reach uh, 10,000. So as I was saying, we got many contracts as well. We got Pijao Potredillo, that's one of the main way, uh, contracts, at least in terms of production of this area, that was it's signed in the last contract since 2009. We got Ato Nuevo, Huila, Tello La Jagua, and Cahuan. If we see Pijao Potreillo got more than 200 wells, and that's of course represented in the production that is fiscalized, that we got like uh, legalized uh, in the in the ANH in this very moment. So for the northern part, the BSM4, the BSM5, and the BSM7, we got a huge amount of 2D seismic surveys. You can realize that this part of here, the western part, is not covered by 2D seismic surveys. That's because most of these seismic surveys are bounded by the outcropping of the Bayibagé Batholit and the Saldaña and Payande, where we only got covered all of the trend, at least up to the to the fault that is uplifting these, these basins. In the BSM4, we got 15 seismic surveys apart from 1944, 84 to 2006, with a total length of 839.4 kilometers. In the BSM-5, we got 15 seismic surveys acquired from 1984 to 2011 with a total length of 1100. And the BSM-7, that is this one here, we got 11 seismic surveys that was acquired from 1987 to 2007 with a total length of 932.14 kilometers. Most of the 3D seismic surveys, unfortunately, doesn't enter into the areas properly. So that's the reason that we don't take that into account. And this is the block BSM 37 that we got the main one, at least in the in the in the western part, the Neva 3D 98. That is the one that the ANH have been have interpreted in order to find some of the possible leads at the Honda Group. As, as well, we got 21 seismic surveys acquired from 1921 to 2005 with a total length of 2,102 kilometers. That's a huge amount in terms of coverage. The infrastructure at the upper Magdalena Valley is quite good in terms that we got the main stations, such as Montañuelo, Toldado, Tenay, Tello, that are not far, more than five to 10 kilometers, if they're not into the area, such as Soldado, that is an oil pipeline that is into the BSM-5 near to, nearby to what was called the Kimbaya field. We got as well some gas pipelines such as Neiva and Dina that are mainly located nearby to the BSM-37. Talking about the geological framework, this is a quick sketch about the basin evolution to just bear in mind why we have the structures with transpressive and transtension fault that got those implications that was shown, for example, by Maria previously. So the upper Magdalena Valley Basin comprises superposition of different stages of deformation. First, we got the Jurassic tectonic extensional gain intensity, leading to formation of complex rifts and occurrence of volcanic centers that we can see, for example, in the volcanic sedimentary sequences that we got in the Saldana formation. Afterwards, we got the Cretaceous that got the positional environment that changed from continental to a marine setting, such as the transition from the AB formation to the main caballos at the shore phase and the B 
beta group that we got a bit deeper, but with the development of the calcareous uh, lithologies. Latest Cretaceous to Paleocene, we got phase stages of compressive deformation. We got a replacement of marine by continental conditions. At the middle Eocene to Oligocene, we got several pulses of uplift of the central cordillera. The westward virgin source bed associated with accumulation of, of seam tectonic deposits. The upper Magdalena Valley Basin behaved as a proximal forelap basin. During the Miocene, we got that the eastern conjugal rises. It intensifies during main pulses of Andean origin. The uplift starts with tectonic inversion of normal faults that were creating during the rift, formed during previous extensive stage. And sediments they were derived from the rising of both cordilleras. We have converted the upper Magdalena Valley basin into an intramontane basin, that is the one that we found nowadays. So this is a bit of the structural framework. The structural framework on the understanding of the structural framework, at least for the uh, Girardot basin, is based on the proposal by Ramona and Rosero in 2004. So we can see in here that we got the upper Magdalena Valley basin. It's a structural depression that's oriented south southwest and not north northeast. It is limited at both flanks by compressive and trans. Transpressive fault system. The transpressive fault system got a great importance in this area because, first, the system is, is, is outcropping some pre Cretaceous basement and Cretaceous sedimentary sequences. It is like that the Hiradot and Neibas basin were a single basin until the early Miocene. The Hiradot basin might be divided in four zones according to its geometry. The first one is a western margin with echelon sine clines were formed due to transpressing system. And we can see here, for example, how the Abechuco syncline is like riding the Chitnima syncline due to the thrusting of the Elberhel fault that we can see uh, that we will see later on that the Elberhel fault and the Kalarma fault got an importance into our leads proposal. Second one, we got a certain center with shallow basement and thin on the formation cover that we can easily see that this formation cover is more related to maybe the, the, the part of Kimbaja or even Southern. Northern center with a thick tertiary cover and an eastern margin with a thin tertiary cover and complex Cretaceous sheet. Part of the shortening is taken up by the synclines at the internal associate cross with prospective faults. This is a, like a quick uh, structural like to take into, into a glance the general structural elements with the help of the Bouguer anomaly map. So we can see here, for example, that we got the depot center of the here dot basin that is associated to a negative anomaly. As well, we got an even more negative anomaly at the south, at the south that is related to the neighbor basin. And as well as we know, both of the sub basins are divided by Matagaima Nata, Elpata, Elpata basin high. Positive anomaly, are associated with the Iba de Basolith and the volcano sedimentary units of Pajande and Caldania formation that are related in this part of the basin. As well, we got at the east section, Cretaceous at cropping due to the thrusting with south S virgin structures controlled by the Prado and Suarez fault system. Basement lifted by the faults. That's the reason that, for example, in some parts of the, we can see that there is thrusting, but there is no uh, gravity expression of it. Meanwhile, when the basement, as we will see, uh, we have seen in the, for example, in the sections shown by Maria, that the basement is involved into the detachment and the trusting in this area. This is a bit of the stratigraphic setting that was already shown by Cesar. So as for the areas that we are offering into this round, we got the main reservoirs as the Cavalli formation, that we got the, the type to short by patients that got a huge importance in terms of reservoir quality, despite the fact that maybe to the north, the Cavallo's formation got a calcareous component that is a bit stronger than in some of the main reservoirs at the southern part. We got as well Montserrat formation that are platform sandstones with high continuity. The Onda group, that is the one related to BSM 37, that we got some stones of fluvial environment. Uh, mainly the couple of formations that are related to the Honda group, Villa Vieja and La Victoria formation. And as well as Cesar showed that most people know, the main source in the upper Magdalena Valley Basin is the Vigeta group, which include the Tetuan, 
Bambuca and La Frontera. It's important to mention that many of the wells that we will show today got a reservoir as well in the Vegeta group. For example, the Tuan, despite the fact of being a continuous limestone, it got some calcareous sandstones that had been produced in some of the wells that I will show you later on. So for the BSM4, we got Tolima 1, that was a well drilled by a in 1988 with a total depth of 3,690 feet with target at the Cavallos formation. It got nine DSPs, but just two of them produced 47 barrels of water. It was, it was dry. Then the well was abandoned. It's important to mention that maybe this well wasn't properly located because of the timing of the seismic acquisition data and the structural framework that was considered afterwards. At the Tomogo one, we got a shallow well drilled by Hokol in 1990 with a total depth of 2,500 feet. The target was Luisa sandstones from the upper Cavallos formation. There are, unfortunately, there are no data about the test. At the Michu one, it is a well that was drilled by Hokol in 1990 with a total depth of 4,094 feet. It had numerous gas shows in the Vegeta formation and Cavallos formation. Unfortunately, those gas shows, they, they weren't commercial at the time. Here I got um, the well Calarma. Let's see if I can uh, zoom in this, this section that shows a correlation between Tomogo, Michu, uh, Tolima, and we can see how the, the sandstone of the Cavallos formation is decreasing in thickness for our Tomogo and Michu. That Tomogo and Michu, uh, they were like looking for those thin sandstones that are called Teresa sandstones, but got an important decrease in terms of the thickness of the main reservoir that's Cavallo formation. So Calarma one, the well drilled by Hokol in 2004, uh, go, uh, it reached a total depth of 5,525 uh, uh, 5, feet with targeting the Cavallos formation sandstones with some, some sort of calcareous interval in this area. Uh, two MDTs were taken at the Vegeta group, especially at the Tuan formation, with a total gas of 31,651 ppm, and the Vegeta group with total gas, uh, it, it, I think, as far as I know, this one, the, the one that is above this one, it got, it got uh, 18,392 ppm. Additionally, to those couple of tests, the MVT, we got 19 repeated formation tests that were measured. The structure failed with possible of lack of correct timing between the structure and migration. This is the section that shows the the Calarma, this is a, a section taken from the report of a call in 2004. So we got the Kimbaya field, that is this one that we got in this very moment we are offering in this Columbia round. The well drilled by a copper in 1988 with a total depth of 6,152, proving hydrocarbons at sandstones in the upper Cavallos formation. The well Kimbaya II drilled in 1989 with a total depth of 5,760 5, feet, despite of showing hydrocarbons at the Cavallo formation, it was abandoned due to the high production of water during testing. The structure of the Kimbaya field is associated with a system of reverse fault with eastward curtains. Kimbaya 4, that was, uh, as far as you know, was the, la the last one drilled in the area, was drilled by Hokol in 1995 with a total depth of 5,587 5, feet. Three DSTs were taken in the upper Cavallos formation with production of oil with an API of 17.5 degrees, and oil saturations about 50%. The well half a production that we can see in here that was continued during the past from no November 95 to, to January of 1996, with 750 barrels of oil per day. This is the one that the Rio Saldana that is nearby to the area of BSM5. So Rio Saldana one was drilled by Hokol in 1987 with a total vertical depth of 500, 5,000, 
and 344 feet. Despite of having the target at the Caballos Formation Sand, the producer level is located at the Tetuan Formation in some calcareous sandstones that they found during the drilling, and if they were more interesting than the ones uh, found in Caballos Formation. The structure is a northwest southeast trending faulted anti line created by a series of east dipping imbricate back thrust, spawned from a major west dipping cross fault. The drawdown was the test with the best results at the Tetuan limestone with a volume of 1.6 million of stock barrels. This one is the well, El Queso, that well drilled by Hokol in 1984 with a total depth of 2,630 feet with a target at tertiary units, mainly Chicoral formation. Despite of thinking first that from the 2,130 top, they found sedimentites uh, due to pest shot, they realized that we were, it was crystal basement. It's appealing that the lock record the presence of oil at several horizons, but there is no optical signal of crude in the samples. At Tallares 1, the well drilled by the Texas Petroleum in 1954, with a total depth of 5,348 feet, it was drilled with targets mainly at the tertiary sequence. The current structure interpretation showed that the well was with on the northwestern flank of a fade and titan structure. The main causes of failure were the lack of seismic information for well planning related to the structure drill, the lack of reservoir, and the ineffectiveness of the seal rock and the trap. Maybe taking into account that is a lack of reservoir at the Cavallos formation, taking into account maybe some targets, some tertiary units, or maybe the Vigeta at the Tetuan, maybe if we find some quality of the reservoir, those wells that didn't find maybe Cavallos formation who have a maybe a better perspectivity. This one is the Olaya Herrera, that according to Koyaima, the country was born in 1989, the well wasn't built. And we got Istanbul one, that the well drilled in 2003 by Kappa Resources. The well was drilled in a halted anti structure. The well had oil shows in precarious levels at the lower section of the Vigeta group. It showed lower gas, uh, were present as well. Either of the shows, unfortunately, were not commercial. Source and reservoir, rock thicknesses were thinner than expected. Uh, it was thinner than expected due to how uh, the spacing to the hierarchy dot is changing from a domain when we got a thicker sequence to a thinner sequence software. Geochemically, from SIPs and moon logging, it could be said that there is was a system, a proven petroleum system. All of this information about Istanbul and Tallares was taken from reports of next in 2006. Go the one, the well drilled by Repsol in 2010 with a total depth of 5,650 feet uh, with a target at the upper Cavallos formation, Chipa Sands from the Tetuan formation. They were had about hole, bad hole conditions and the results were negative due to the absence of targets. No shows reported in the mood log and the well was not tested. Why new one? The well drilled by Nexen Petroleum in 2006 with a total depth of 5,729 feet, where the well was drilled to test partially a four way deep closure structure at the Cavallos Reservoir target. The well found, unfortunately, only Javi Formation and Vigeta Group. Formation were not test, but the limestones of Vigeta Group had poor hydrocarbon shows that was uh, proven by the C1 and C5 chromatography. We got El Dier that was drilled by Ecopetrol in 2014. We are reaching or we are maybe getting close to, to wells that have been drilled recently with a total depth of 4,500 feet with target at the basal sands of the Honda Group, the Victoria Formation specifically. The well had hydrocarbon shown in the basal Honda Group and Barcelosa Formation, but the pressure tests show low productivity intervals. The Guasirco one well was drilled in 1977 by Petróleos Colombo Brasileiros CCA with a total depth of 7,360 feet, where the well was drilled to test Guasirco Anticline with target at the Montserrat formation. The well, unfortunately, had poor gas shows were locked within the Guadalajara formation and minor gas, and some poor oil shows were reported in the Montserrat formation. The DST one 
was given at the Montserrat Reformation. And in the 7,064 feet open assessor with a good, good blow during the 45 minutes up to uh, 12 inch and the blow died. We got here one of the main wells of the BN737 area, Itnunda and Kasika, both of them we target at the Onda group, specifically to the basal sands that are related mainly to La Victoria formation. Uh, Nunda showed in the test 134 barrels of oil with 30 degree of API. API. Uh, the rest of the intervals had high uh, volume of water. The extensive test produced uh, 30, 300 and 500 barrels of water with producing 185 barrels of oil. Casica 1 was drilled by a in 2014 as as mentioned before, the target was La Victoria Formation. The gas shows from the La Victoria Formation. Oil shows were present from 5,856 to 6,000. The well confirms presence of hydrocarbons at the lower member of La Victoria Formation. It means that we got a proven system that maybe wasn't commercial for these couple of wells, but maybe uh, taking an assessment of the NAVA 3D98 3D seismic and using maybe some seismic inversion due to the, amount, the high amount of wealth that we got really in the area with a QI evaluation, maybe some better reservoir quality could be found. The, these are the values of the main contracts uh, that got fiscalized production in 2020 by the ANH. So, for example, for the contract San Luis, we got, in average per day, we got 109 barrels of oil. But the most important value in here is the, from the contract Pijao Potrerillo, that's nearby to the BSM 37, that got 21,312 barrels of oil per day. As well as the 21 average gas production in terms of million, uh, millions of cubic feet per day, we got the Pijao Potrerillo produce 3.51 million. And the, the, rest of, uh, the rest of the contracts that nearby the areas that we are offering at the moment are producing around 100K of cubic feet per day. In terms of seismic quality of the areas that we have assessed, this is a line from the BSM4. Uh, as we can see, we got many of chaotic reflections. Uh, the Western area, chaotic reflections are related to the uplifting of the Ibagué Batolith and the Saldana Formation, that as many of the geophysicists that have worked in the area know uh, and have been victim of Saldana, the Saldana Formation got a high velocity that consumes the high frequencies first, and second one produce a, a lack of imaging and pull ups that may, may, uh, maybe some of the companies have drilled those pull-ups that were just your physical artifacts. Uh, we got major challenges in terms of imaging in the area due to static corrections. We got topographic challenges and thick weather layer. The lack of continuity into the main reflectors is because of intense faulting with low angle and opposite virgin faults. We, so we got, for example, here, uh, westward virgin faults. And in the same area, we can have Eastward burning pulse. So that creates that lack of continuity in the high amplitude uh, reflections. So this is the seismic interpretation for the main leads that we have identified. This is the what we call the cloud video lead. We have found this couple of leads that are associated to the anticlines that are related or controlled by the main trusting, the trusting faults. We got some fault, fault related faults. Uh, those ones are maybe the target where the Cavallo's formation that we can see in here that we have high amplitudes, maybe because of the calcareous signature of the reservoir in this area. We got as well what we call Norbehel, that the Norbehel is related or associated as well to an anticline related to the trusting. We can see in here the Eocene of conformity. The next one is the Kimbaya West that we had the opposite virgin fault system with a common detachment as the basement. 
And we can see that related to this westward uh, virgin fault, we can have some folding associated at the lower Cretaceous sequences, maybe to the Cavallus formation or the Vegeta formation. This one is the Ataco syncline. We think that the Ataco syncline, due to extensive fault that have experienced to the, to the tectonic history, have created some of the, or have isolated some of the Cavallos formation with maybe, um, with the fault creating high jump between the different juxtaposition of the sediments, and that will create a possible good seal for the, for the area. Despite the fact that we know that taking into account a syncline as a prospective target and the faults as the main seals is a high risk, However, it will be a shallow target with good possibility of reservoir in this area as shown by GoDa1. This is the one that we are proposing for the BSM 37 at Nunda West. We got some structures that are related to the basal group of the Honda formation, the Victoria formation on the group, sorry. We got four leads that have been identified structurally using the 3D seismic. And those are the leads. I like to take a glance of aware as well for, for those again. So this is the first one at the north in the BSM-4. We got two anticlines related to trust. We got Nor Norbert Hell in the BSM-5. We got Kimbaya West. And we got the Ataco syncline. And for the southern part, we got four leads related to the basal sand zones of the Honda group. And talking about recovery, uh, recoverable prospective resources, we got at the BSM-4, we got a 23.21 million of barrels of oil. And for the second one, we got 13.4 million millions of barrels of oil with the area of the lead that we have presented here. For the BSM-5, they are quite smaller. They are in, in, in comparison with the ones found in the BSM-4. We got, for the, the third lead, we got 6.37 million of barrels of oil. And for the Kimbaya West, we got 4.13 uh, million barrels of oil. We got for the Ataco syncline a prospectivity of 5.54 million of barrels. Uh, most of them are related to Cavallo's formation. And for the BSM 37, that is the target at the Honda group, we can find resources that are around 0 0.054 uh, million of barrels and 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.28 million of barrels for these different leads that we found in here. So those are the volumetrics in total. We got an original oil in place estimated at 1,193 point million of barrel. Uh, using recovery factor that is an average of the different contracts that we have seen before of 25% and a chance of success of the 18%. We can calculate prospective resources at a best estimate of 25.85 million of barrels. So conclusions. Three of the four blocks offered by the ENH, the BSM-4, BSM-5, and BSM-7, are located at the, at the northwestern part of the Upper Magdalena Basin in the Girardot Basin. The block BSM-35 is located between the Pijao Potreguillo and Huila contracts at the Neiva Basin that had a huge amount of produ production. The Upper Magdalena Valley Basin is considered the third most productive basin of Colombia. It produces around 18 million of barrels of oil per year from more than 30 fields. The main source at the Upper Magdalena Valley Basin is considered Vigeta Group, and the main reservoirs at the blocks offered by the NH are considered the Upper Cavallos and on the group, the formation that are included into the on the group. Nine wells have been drilled in the northern blocks, BSN4, BSN5, and BSN7, while in the southern block, 23 wells have been drilled. In the northern blocks, 41 2D seismic surveys have been acquired from 1984 to 2017, in the southern block, 21 to the seismic surveys have been acquired, and five to the seismic surveys have been acquired from 1971 to 2009. The Upper Magdalena Valley Basin 
is a depression oriented south, southwest to north, north, northeast with superposition of different stages of deformation with tectonic inversion starting from the Eocene with the major event at the Miocene. The main structures at the Gila dot area are in echelon synclines with associated trusts that repeat mainly the lower Cretaceous sequences, such as Cavallos and Vegeta formations. Most of the wells drill at the Gila dot basin reach a maximum depth of 6,000 feet with the main target at the Cavallos formation, showing plenty of the shows. One of the main challenges to avoid reservoir problem is to assess better the quality using new technologies such as 3D seismic with QI, QI evaluations. The seismic interpretation carried out by the NH have shown shallow leads associated to implication with low angle and so these work very important. A lead into the, into the faulted attack of incline is proposed where the juxtapositions of the Vegeta group with the Samsons of the upper uh, Cavallos formation could create a good prospectivity for the area. Inside the areas offered by the ENH, nine shallow leads have been mapped using seismic interpretation with a best estimate of recoverable prospective resources at 26.85 million of barrels of oil. I'd like to thank to all the people that presented here. I'm the one who's in charge on the closure, on the ceremony closure of the presentation today. So I'd like to take a glance about some of the questions that has been asked in the chat. For most of the, if we got any technical questions, uh, we will address those questions uh, via email in order to answer technically uh, properly. So it seems that most of the questions that we have in here have been answered by uh, the professor Javier Guerrero and Cesar Mora. So as a closure, uh, we would like to invite you to any questions, any further questions that you have, uh, and uh, any comments or anything that you would like to know about the round and the blocks that will be being offered uh, that are being offering in the Colombia Round 2021 for the BSM for the Upper Magdalena Valley Basin, we will glad to answer all the questions. If, we, if you like, we you can maybe book some data rooms in order to show a bit further uh, all the leads and the information that we have taken into account for calculating the, the whole perspective of all resources. And that's it. Thank you to everyone for your assistance. And I hope you have enjoyed the many, the, the good talks that we have today. Thanks to Cesar Mora, to Javier Guerrero, to Alvaro, to Maria, to Chahit. And see you next Friday with the presentation about the Janus Basin.